So the second is called secondary osteoarthritis, naturally. It usually strikes a person before the age of 40 and is known to be primarily caused by trauma to the joint. This trauma can be received from a sudden inj injury, such as a car accident or a fall, or after surgery. Or it can be caused by many small injuries that occurred over time. So it accumulates over time. So beyond osteoarthritis, we talked about primary and secondary osteoarth osteoarthritis, there are rheumatic diseases that cause different forms of arthritis with symptoms that range from inflammation in one or more joints to inflammation spreading to the muscles, the tendons, ligaments, internal organs, and even the skin. So that's a generalized rheumatic inflammatory condition. So not only are the joints affected, but more tissue structures are affected. The joints, obviously, we talked about the bone, and then we have cartilage, and then the two work together. But attached to the bone, we have tendons and ligaments. So the tendons attach, and they turn into the outer, outer uh, covering of the bone, which is called the periosteum. So actually, the periosteum slowly changes into tendon, and then the tendon becomes more tendon-like, and then slowly it turns into muscle, and then the muscle goes, and then it turns startly muscle and tendon, and then all tendon, and then back into bone. And it crosses a, uh, all muscles, cross a joint, and then the tendons attach on either side of where that muscle attaches. So that's how we can move, is because a muscle is attached to tendon, which goes into the bone itself, the outer covering, and then we get the contraction and lengthening of the muscle. The ligaments are very much like tendons. The material is very similar, but there's no muscle. So it's the, tendon, it's the ligament material. It crosses across the joint, and it's ligament material on the other side. No muscle in between. So ligaments just hold joints together, whereas tendons move the joint. But we can get inflammation of the tendons and the ligaments because if the joints are also inflamed, the surrounding tissues, because of the chemicals, from inflammation perfusing into the tissues can cause irritation of other, other uh, tissue structures like ligaments, tendons, and muscles. So rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. It's brought on when the immune system attacks its own self, when the body itself all of a sudden looks like a bacteria or a virus or something and the immune system says, you know, I don't know, this looks like something I should like, deal with. Even though it's your own body, it, may, it has a mistaken identity. Maybe it's not wearing, the immune system is wearing the wrong glasses that day. And it's looking at it, it's going, I don't know, that looks sort of like that bacteria I saw the other day, but it's actually your own tissues. So that's what an autoimmune disorder is. Just like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it's very common for people to have a thyroid condition where the body is attacking its own tissue there. There can be other things going on too, a scleroderma, lupus. These are all other autoimmune disorders that people may have. And if you have an autoimmune disorder, there's a tendency to, ve to develop more if the immune system isn't balanced properly. And if you have more, then it could attack the joints as well. Rheumatoid arthritis affects more than 2 million people in the United States, and women are three times more likely than men to develop rheumatoid arthritis. It usually sets in between the ages of 20 and 40, but does not discriminate against older people or children. In other words, they can get it too. It can develop in them as well. However, one can take various steps to prevent all forms of arthritis and protect oneself from further joint damage. To determine what solution would be best to help you, we are now going to do a survey to look at your symptoms. Now, did everyone get the, uh, the green arthritis and stress survey? Does, yes, everyone? If, if someone doesn't have one, we have some more in the back. I'd like you to fill it out this, at this moment so that you can see which solutions might work best for you. So please fill in your name and your email address if you would like to be on our list of lectures upcoming. I won't send you a bunch of junk mail. And if you don't want that, uh, just write it on there anyway and say that you don't want the information. Number one, there are a variety of symptoms 
Um, please check off a box if you have had any of the following symptoms in the past six months. Pain, restricted motion, or numbness in the body. It could be the neck, the legs, shoulders, arms, low back, or hands. If you have it anywhere there, please check the box. Perhaps you have fatigue. You might wake up in the morning quite tired, or throughout the day you might need to take a couple naps, or by the end of the day you're just so exhausted you just can't stay awake for your favorite TV show, or uh, you fall asleep while you're eating. Just check the box there, please. If you have swelling in the joints, knee pain, I know a lot of you are ahead of, ahead of me on this list here because you're very quick, but if you have any of those, please check the box. Knee pain, wrist or hand pain, headaches or migraines, irritability, or insomnia and sleep problems. Obviously, things like insomnia and sleep problems will weaken the immune system. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, your arthritic conditions are going to become even worse. So, how many people have checked off one or more boxes? Please raise your hands. Oh, keep, keep them up, keep them up. Now look around, you aren't alone, look around. Now, you might think, well, this is just normal. You might be saying, ah, oh, it's normal to have pain and restricted motion. Well, it's common in this group because you have arthritis, but it's not normal. It's not normal to have these symptoms. These symptoms are warning signs that something's going on in your body, that something's breaking down. And that's, it's, it's like the warning light on your dashboard. Any, anyone here drive? Yeah? Drive. drive. <laughs> and so have you ever had a light come on on the dashboard of your car? Maybe it's the oil light or the brake light? Uh-huh. So what did you do when it came on? Take it for service? You didn't just like keep driving it for a while and say, well, the brake light's on, you know, if, if the brakes don't work half the time, that's okay. No, <laughs> no. I mean, you, you, you realize it's a warning light, you better take some action. And so that's what symptoms are, is telling you that you need to take some action. And if the action you're working, like if you take your car to the mechanic and the, the brake light's on and they say, okay, we did everything and you're driving and the light comes back on, you might want to think about going to another mechanic, right? Because they didn't fix it the first time. So symptoms, just like lights on the dashboard, are warning signs. So... After you checked off these boxes here, please check off or write in which of the above bothers you the most, how long you've been bothered by the condition, and describe how it feels or affects you when it's at its worst. Perhaps you've already done that, but please do that because the, the rest of the information that we're going to go over will be uh, more relevant to you, how that particular symptom affects your life. It might cause you to be moody or irritable or maybe interrupt your sleep, pain can interrupt sleep, or it might restrict your daily activities. It might affect your work or your volunteer work, or perhaps you um, do various activities at your church or other organizations, synagogue or something, and maybe it would affect your decision making there, or perhaps it would create a poor attitude. I, I'm not suggesting anyone here has a poor attitude. But your pain might affect you in a way that it makes you feel a little grumpy and kind of hard to, hard to be friendly with people. It might decrease your productivity or exhaust you at the end of the day. And it might affect you in other ways. It might, have, it might make you lose patience with your spouse or children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Anyone have great-grandchildren here? Wow, all right, terrific. So it might restrict your being able to lift them up and carrying them around. I mean, if they're teenagers, you probably aren't doing that anyway. But if they're like little babies, you might want to. Um, or it might interfere with your ability to participate in hobbies or other desired activities like, like that. So uh, down at this bottom part, if you want to check any of those added uh, boxes, uh, if you um, would like to get rid of the problem, please check off the box saying yes. And then uh, if your answer is yes, there are several alternatives available too. Everyone got it filled out? Great. So 
there are four warning signs of particular of potential arthritic development. They are number one, pain, number two, swelling, number three, restricted range of motion, and number four, poor posture leading to excessive weight and tension on a joint. So we are now going to perform a series of range of motion tests. All right. So um, these tests will help us determine which areas of your body might be at risk. And during the following test, do not go past the level where you're noticing pain. And don't go past the level at which you have restriction in your movement. Okay? Just go to the point where you feel some restriction in the movement or go to the point where you have pain, but don't go any farther than that. So um, now we're going to have everyone stand up. The first one, you don't have to stand up, but we're going to have you stand up anyway. So, so first of all, we're going to have you turn your head, your neck, from side to side. Do you feel any restriction in the range of motion or any pain? Make a note of that. Number two, we're going to check our range of motion in our trunk, the trunk of our body, which is this part from the waist up. Right? And so I want you to stand up and slide your hand along your thigh toward your knee and your feet as you lean sideways while looking straight ahead. Okay? So do it one way. Now go the other way. Do you feel any restriction or pain in any part of your body as you're doing that? The neck, uh-huh. Sorry to hear that. So now we're going to test the elbows. Again, we're testing various joints by moving. And if you're noticing some restriction or pain, then that indicates that that area might be at risk or it may actually be involved with some inflammation or arthritic change. So your elbows. So we're going to have you... Stand with your arms at your side, and you're going to have your, your hands pointed upward, parallel to the floor, and try to relax your shoulders. I was sort of pulling mine up. Going to rotate your hands until they're facing down. Okay, do you feel any restriction or pain that way? Then rotate them outward, as far as you can go. Should be able to go farther than just straight up. Okay. So that is testing the bones attached to your elbow here. We've got two bones, radius and ulna, radius, ulna. And they're sort of parallel, parallel like this, but they'll twist around each other as you rotate. Rotate them this way and that way. There are a lot of bones in the, in the wrist. We've got those joints here at the elbow that we're testing by this motion like this. All right, wrists. Now we are going to put the back of your hands together while keeping your arms straight in front of you. If you're able to do this, any pain or restriction. Some people hands will be up like, or arms will be up like this. That's not what we're looking for. We want the backs of your hands against each other and the arms straight across. If you can't do that, there is a restriction of the range of motion in the joint. It could be because of arthritic change, or osteoarthritis, or, or rheumatic, or if it's painful, it's indicating there's something to do. Okay, now let's turn them the other way and do like the prayer sign and see if you can do that where the hands are, the arms are straight across parallel to the floor with the fingers straight up. Now, you might have one side that can't go as far as the other. Any restriction in range of motion indicates an area where the, the joint is either inflamed or weak, or you might have a contraction of muscles somewhere, or the tendons are somehow contracted a little bit, and so you can't move it as far because it's coming up against another endpoint of movement. 